Yes. You guys are coming out right after E3, obviously. We are, yeah. Next Does week. that add extra pressure knowing it's so close after E3, or do you guys still feel like the eyes will be there and that maybe the excitement of E3 will lead into this huge release just the week after? Yeah, I, th I think for us it's a it's an amazing opportunity that we are here and people are queuing up to play the game that's coming out next week. So that's awesome and the fans love it, which is great. Um, and I think, you know, E3 is an exciting time. There's lots of great announcements from, from other studios. There's been some amazing stuff talked about already. But I think, you know, for gamers to kind of roll into the following week and have something really cool that they can play that they've right, seen at the right show right, is, is, a, is, a, is a great opportunity. So yeah, roll on next week. That's all I can say. This, the game takes place around about 12 months after the events of Arkham City. Uh, Joker died at the end of that game, spoiler alert. Um, so Gotham has been through a period of recovery and kind of rebuilding. It's been peaceful, people are like, oh, this is good, this is good. And then Scarecrow, suddenly he's back. So he steps into that, that power vacuum uh, and he is threatening to donate a fear toxin bomb in downtown Gotham City. Um, as a result of that, Commissioner Gordon evacuates the city and it's your job as Batman to kind of find the Scarecrow, stop that happening on a very long, rainy Halloween evening. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a really cool story, very emotional. Batman is at the peak of his powers, so this is kind of, I don't want to say his twilight, but this is like, you know, he, he is a force to be reckoned yeah. with. So Scarecrow realises that and brings with him the Arkham Knight, and the Arkham Knight is rolling into Gotham with tanks, with aerial drones, with foot soldiers, so he's fully tooled up. So he's like the physical embodiment of Scarecrow's mental fear. So it's this kind of really interesting relationship that they, those, have, those guys have. And they both have agendas with regards to the Batman. They both want to bring him down for different reasons. It's a very different challenge, you know, like Joker is, uh, he's like a chaotic influence. So the way that you kind of build ideas and, and gameplay design around him is very different to someone like Scarecrow. Scarecrow is not a physically powerful opponent, but he's definitely there in terms of that mental kind of challenge. And, and he operates in, with fear is his main weapon and Batman operates with fear as his main kind of weapon. So it's a really interesting dynamic between the two. They both have this kind of similar sort of mechanism at the core of their of their being, but they use it in different ways. So it's been it's been really really interesting developing that character. He looks pretty hideous. Um, we've redesigned how he looks and kind of but he's not that physically powerful enemy so we had to bring in someone else who could fill that that role and that was the Arkham Knight. You know it's, it's been a huge undertaking for us like nearly four years in development which is a long time. We rolled pretty much straight off the end of Arkham City into the development of Batman Arkham Knight um, and what what Sefton Hill our game director his vision was really to give players like the ultimate Batman simulator so you know you, you do that by giving them the iconic vehicle you know the Batmobile but we couldn't just put that in Arkham from City because it just wouldn't work. It wasn't big enough. It wasn't, um, you know, accommodating to that kind of gameplay. So, you know, you think about bringing in the car, but we have to have an environment in which to play it. So that means we have to build the entirety of Gotham City. But we have to build it in such a way that is accommodating to the vehicle, and also navigation by grapple and glide and on foot as well as driving. And then you kind of left with thinking, well, how are we going to do that? We need more horsepower. <laughs> yeah. So we have to move to next gen only. So embracing you know, that transition from the previous generation of hardware to, to PS4 and Xbox One was really the only thing that we could do. And it's opened a lot of doors for us. It's given a lot, us a lot of opportunity. Um, for example, our artists could pretty much do what they want in terms of the city design and how it looks. Uh, every building is handcrafted. There's no procedurally generated stuff. It's all it's, it's all done by hand by a big team of artists in lovingly rich detail. So it's really about giving that super immersive experience. You can, everywhere you're looking Gotham, there's something interesting to kind of lose yourself in. Our lead gameplay programmer, who kind of has been with us from the start, who kind of, you know, developed our key systems and kind of how the game worked, um, he, he took the Batmobile under his wing and it was his responsibility to kind of bring it to life. Once you've, you, once you've used it a few times, you understand that it is essentially an extension of Batman. It feels very natural. Yeah. It doesn't feel forced. This is like the most iconic vehicle, so it has yeah. to do 
more than just drive around the city. You know, with the press of a button, it turns into a tank. So you have battle mode, you know, have pursuit mode. So you can tear around the city at high speed. You can engage the Archimedes tanks in battle mode. It's super maneuverable. It's like the ultimate gadget with loads of cool stuff on there. So yeah, it was a, it was a huge undertaking, but I think you know gamers when they get it in their hands will understand why we've done it and we'll, we'll kind of love it as much as we do. Right. And then another new addition is the dual play mechanic in which Batman is joined by some friends. So dual play only takes place in certain scenarios so it's not something that's available all the time. You know we've made a Batman game so it's about being Batman right. but there are certain stories that require you to work with your allies to help them or for them to help you and what we wanted to do is make that combat combat and those scenarios different to the main game add a little extra element here and there so whilst you're engaged in combat you know it's still the free flow system that you're used to we've overhauled it slightly we've added more animations more moves you know tweak the timing of certain things so it still feels really sweet but what we've also been able to do is bring in other characters so at the press of a button you'll switch to whoever the other opponent is and you can do that at any time during those combat scenarios but if you manage to build up your combo to a certain point you'll be able to unleash a dual play takedown and you'll be able to take those guys out as a double team which is awesome yeah it's a really cool story and a bit of a roller coaster ride and we hope the fans get to, to experience and love it as much as we do there is no savior no more hope no more Batman.